Good evening, everyone. This is Daryl Moore. Welcome to week four of Digital Literacy. You guys have made it. You're pretty much through your first week, first uh, college course. So um, we've been introducing you to a lot of stuff. Last week we had a pretty active week. And uh, this week we're not going to introduce any new concepts or, or anything like that. The theme this week is reflection. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you a bit of a, a moment to let everything that we've introduced in week one, two, and three sink in and coalesce and kind of look at how the connections fit together. Let it, let it all get together in your brain. If this were a workout, this is the cool down phase. This is the last 15 minutes of the workout where you're, uh, you're, you're going to go a little bit slower. The, the uh, activities won't be as difficult. But what we're asking you to do is to look back and think about all the stuff we've introduced and try to fit a framework in your head for how it all fits together. Uh, the one thing we don't want to do is throw a lot of stuff at you, have you watch it go by, and then never think about it again. We are, we've introduced a lot of concepts that we hope you will carry forward in your career as a student and in your career as an online actor. And so we want all this stuff to kind of settle in and become part of you. And that's what this week is about. So that's what the activities are geared towards. And um, we, we've made this week intentionally a little less strenuous. So you're going to maybe have a bit of a break before you move on to your next class next month, uh, which begins Sunday night at midnight. So tonight I'm going to talk about this theme of reflection. We're going to ask you what you thought of this class. We like feedback. And I know they're going to ask you to fill out a feedback on a, uh, a, a web form, but we like to hear from you. We have the opportunity every month to make the course a little better, to move something or change something or add something or pull something off. So we really do uh, like to listen to you and get your feedback. So I'm gonna ask you just to tell me what, you're, what you thought of the different elements of the course. I'm gonna talk you through the main assignment for the week. It's called Bringing It All Together. And I'll explain that to you. And uh, as part of that, I'll show you something called the Digital Citizenship Compass. We're going to introduce that as a, a part of the homework. So the first thing I want to do is just hear from you. This crowd isn't as uh, large, so hopefully maybe you won't be so shy. I'd like to just open the mics up and, and let people talk. So um, anybody who wants to, raise your hand, and I'm going to just turn over the mic. And I'd like to hear what your thoughts were about this month how it turned out for you, what, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you were expecting, if it was different from what you were expecting, uh, how you think it might affect you going forward. We're just really looking to hear your thoughts. So is anybody brave enough to uh, open up and um, uh, want to talk? Uh, with a small group, it's a little difficult. Well, uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to try it this way then. If you go to the Materials tab, in the, uh, the uh, uh, control panel, you'll see that I've made a Google Doc. So I want everybody to go to the Materials tab and click on the Google Doc that says Favorite Tool or Service. And uh, everybody has freedom to write whatever they want, but I've kind of made some columns here. So tools are things like Digo and Google Drive and ideas are things like digital citizenship or, or uh, <clears throat> um, digital literacy, uh, things like that. Activities are the, uh, the things that we had you doing this week or this month, like the misinformation debate. Did you like the getting together with teams? Did you hate it? Um, some of the assignments, looking up your favorite company or using research in the library. Uh, last week, you all did uh, uh, investigations into the Boston bombing with digital citizenship. That's an activity. So just uh, plug in anywhere and write down the things that you liked or the things that you didn't like. We're really just looking for feedback here, and I'm uh, looking just to see um, what your impressions of the class are and if you have any tips for us. You know, sometimes people say, I love Digo, and sometimes people say, I hate Digo. So, you know, it goes back and forth. And, um, you know, as long as, um, the you know, the, the I hate, hate it's don't outnumber the I love it's, uh, it seems like uh, it's at least – provoking people. So I see p people logging in. I'm not seeing anything, uh, uh, anybody typing. 
Oh, there we go. Favorite tool is a library. Yeah, the library is pretty cool. The school librarians are great. I hope somebody, I hope you guys remembered to go in and get your um, your uh, registration so you can check stuff out. Has anybody checked anything out yet? Has anybody uh, rented any games or, or uh, Blu-ray discs or anything like that? Uh, had them come to you yet? No. It's always a cool day when you get free, free stuff in the mail. Uh, my favorite activity was the assignment that let us look at how technology, up, oh, and then I can't read the rest of it. Google Drive is really cool. So we, we, we see love for Google Drive. I've also seen some really great assignments on OneDrive. So, you know, I'm glad that there's that alternative there. Nobody likes to be, have only one choice. At least, uh, you know, the choice of two, you, 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 you have an alternative there. So uh, I see a lot of people that are, are discovering the Google Drive tools. They've maybe had Google accounts for a long time and never really realized all those tools were there. And, you know, people are getting really good at it. Uh, I can tell from, you know, week one to week two to week three, people starting to use Google Doc and Google Slides uh, in a much more um, uh, professional manner and getting getting uh, um, a lot of confidence in it. So uh, that was cool. Cold case, people like the cold case. Uh, yeah, I, um, my class did really great on the cold case. We all went nuts. People uh, uh, gave me uh, things about Al Capone's Twitter feed and everything. So um, it, it, uh, we've got a lot of imaginative students here, and I love to see that creativity. So um, I'm, I'm seeing that uh, people were engaged, and that's pretty much what we experienced from the students. So I'm happy with that. So uh, let's talk about what we are going to ask you to do this week. Um, the discussion assignment harkens back to week one. So we're going to ask you to revisit that digital vision. Now, at week one, we ask you to read the Mark Prinsky article and write a post in relation to that. Uh, this week, we're asking you to think about the person you described, you know, the, the digital actor that, you, that had made you who you were up to week one. And now that you've got a little more knowledge of, of, of what's out there, what, what tools are out there, what... Um, things people can do on the internet. What are some things that you want to do to change your digital self? Um, <clears throat> this isn't really your long-term plans. These are kind of your near-term plans. Do you plan to be a little more careful about your digital security or plan to stop trolling people a little bit less or be, want to be more helpful in, in uh, chat groups? What are some things that you learned about the kind of person you want to be online that you want to um, pay some attention to? That's what we want you to post in 4.4. And then to go along with that, we want you to go back to the original digi digital vision that you created in week one and revise it. Nobody gets to post the exact same digital vision. But all we're really asking you to do is do the 2.0 version. So you can change some little bit of things. You can, you can radically redo it. You can start over. This is a great chance to try a different tool out. If you... Uh, if you did one uh, thing in week one and you saw a lot of your classmates using other software and you really like to try it out, certainly you can you can do a completely new digital vision. Um, and if you think you really nailed it uh, in week one, then all we really ask you to do is to go back and revise it, add some things or uh, change some things to reflect that sort of bigger awareness that you have. And if you didn't have any bigger awareness, then you know, basically talk about that. Talk about how, you know, uh, you were absolutely correct and nailed it in week one, but you cannot turn in the exact same assignment. You just simply have to revise it to some degree. And it doesn't have to be a major amount. Uh, all we're looking for is don't post the exact same thing twice. Um, and for a lot of people, this is a chance to be really creative. So starting over completely and doing a, a completely different digital vision um, especially one that would go along with the, the text that you're going to write about the person that you're planning to become or the person that you want to be more aware about. That's what the, uh, the uh, 4.4 discussion is. And uh, as always, we want you to try to get that in by Wednesday night. That's not a hard deadline, so if it goes over past midnight, it's okay. But uh, remember, 
as with all the other discussions, you have a responsibility to respond to the other students. And that's why we're asking you to get that first post in on Wednesday so that everybody else has a chance to read it. Uh, if you don't get your post in until Sunday night, no one has a chance to read it. So, and uh, um, I've seen a lot of people make fantastic posts and not respond to any other students. And you automatically lose 25 points that way. So, you know, that does affect your grade. And, uh, you know, you, you sure to be getting into the habit of the way these sessions work right now. So get your initial post in by Wednesday, and then you have the rest of the weekend to respond to at least two other people. Uh, the more people you respond to, the better uh, the discussion goes and, and uh, the more friends you make. This is the way that you engage with other people. And so the main assignment for the week, 4.5, is called Bringing It All Together. And it's sort of like hmm, an open book test. It's not really a test, but what, what we're doing is trying to just get a lot of um, gauge of your attitude. We're really trying to see if this material soaks in and uh, is part of your natural thinking. So the assignment uh, is a PDF that you can download with instructions. And the latter part of the instructions are actually everything we ask, want you to talk about. There's three parts to it. And the first part uh, deals with elements of digital citizenship. Now, if you don't remember that, you, you had a whole discussion on it last week, and I'm going to give you the, uh, the link to this web page again, because this, this is going to come back. This is going to be very important. We want you to know the difference between each of these elements. So in this assignment, what we've done is we've, we've written nine sentences, and you need to pick one of the elements of digital citizenship to go with each sentence. So you're matching the term to the sentence. Um, and uh, each sentence should parse out to, to uh, match one of the nine terms. Now, simply matching the term to the name isn't sufficient. We then want you to tell us why you pick that. You know, if posting your own religious beliefs uh, on a public blog is digital security, tell me why. You don't have to go into great detail, but you have to tell me why. If you don't, uh, you're really going to lose some points on this this part of the assignment because uh, we're more interested in the why than if you actually get the uh, all nine matchups correct because we want to know why you're picking or why you're making your choices and decisions. So uh, simply match the term and give us a, a short sentence saying why you believe uh, that term is the correct one. Now, part two deals with a couple of scenarios. And here's where we introduce this thing we call the digital citizenship compass. A normal compass points to north, south, east, and west. The digital citizenship compass lets you feel any way you want about different scenarios. So you can think something's right, you can think it's wrong, you can think maybe, you can think uh, it doesn't bother me, or maybe it's okay for somebody else, or it's worth the shot if I don't get caught. You know, there, there's different levels of um, uh, attachment that you have to particular scenarios. So when I say scenario, what am I talking about? Well, let me give you a for instance here. Um, this is one of the scenarios that you'll be talking about. So let's just try it. You work for a club. The owner approaches you about your knowledge of Photoshop and wants you to edit some of the pictures of the club that are on the club's website. He wants you to add in equipment they don't have put in famous artists who've not played there, and add people to the crowd shots to make it look more crowded. All right? This is not your idea. You're an employee. The boss has asked you to do this. How do you feel about it? Uh, are you okay with it? Does it not bother you? You think it's wrong? How would you respond? So anybody who wants to answer can raise their hand, or we can just have people uh, putting things in the chat box. Now, the problem with the chat box is that you're just going to give me the point on the compass, and again, the real thing we want is you're allowed to feel any way about this you want. Some One person can feel it's okay, and another person can feel it's absolutely morally wrong. The question is, why? Explain yourself. So anybody who can do that in chat is free to, or anybody who wants to uh, grab the microphone can. All right, I have a brave soul, Nicholas White. Hi, Nicholas. Are you there? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Nicholas. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I hear you fine. You sound good. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess I guess it was a lag. I would say uh, maybe maybe not because a is his club. You know, he's just asking my skill of Photoshop. I'm not the one making making any difficult decisions. It's his morale or it's his morals that uh, he's deciding to run his business with. So I'm the one in that case. I guess would be getting paid for it. It's not me that's making the decision on that and. If I, if I was in that situation, I probably wouldn't even know <laughs> that uh, his business does or does not have these such things. I'm just getting paid to do what I do. So it's all the boss's responsibility. Do you think there's a, a possibility that it could uh, hurt you? I mean, if uh, maybe they got sued. Would um, if I, this is why I say maybe, because if I, if I had knowledge of it uh, firsthand, then I'm not going to put myself in a predicament to, to get screwed over. But um, if he just came up to me and asked me to make some things for Photoshop, you know, I, I probably wouldn't analyze too much more into that. Yeah, I mean, we all know the boss tells you to do something. You may not like it, but, you know, it's a job. You have to do it. Uh, somebody else felt differently. Anybody else want the microphone? Anybody out there? Well, uh, usually when we have a little more people in here, we have a, we have a lot of people going back and forth. We have a lot of people that, that sometimes just are adamant that it, it's completely wrong. And it, it is wrong. But uh, everybody is allowed to have the amount of outrage that they can well up. And what we're looking for is for you to completely explain yourself. So um, Nicholas just explained himself pretty well. He may not have matched your point on the scale that you would pick. But that was an excellent response because he explained why he picked the point on the compass that he picked. So if you are uh, more opposed to it, then tell us why you're opposed to it. And also tell us how you're going to deal with the situation because it's a real world situation. So you can, you can in the abstract say, oh, well, my boss is completely wrong and he's going to burn in hell. But are you going to tell your boss he's going to burn in hell to his face? What are the social politics? If you don't like what your boss is telling you, how do you deal with telling him? Uh, you know, what what are the diplomatic ways that you can maybe uh, point him to some alternative solution or offer him, uh, and, you know, another way to go? So these are the kinds of things you want to think about. All of these situations are the kinds of things that could happen in real life, and that's what's really fun about college is that uh, you get to play what if. And you've got the safe space to figure this stuff out. In the real world, if you were really working for the boss and he came into you at your desk and said, whip this up in Photoshop, you would immediately have to say yes or no. You wouldn't even have a chance to think about how you really felt about it. And here you can kind of like work yourself through it because uh, if you don't want to do it, it maybe takes a little bit of thinking about how do you deal with personalities? How do you deal with authority? to get your point across or to say it respectfully or to steer the request in a different direction. So um, part two is about seven different scenarios. If you read through them, then you will react to them with a point on the compass. And then you don't stop with a point on the compass. You go through and you explain why you feel that particular way about the scenario. And you explain yourself uh, in a decent paragraph. What Nicholas said, if he had written that, that would have been an excellent response. So we're really looking just for your true thoughts. Don't try to get into this game of thinking about what we want you to think. You're allowed to feel any way you want about any of these scenarios. But what we really want is for you to explain yourself. And because this is a class about digital literacy, we really want you referring to the concepts, terms, activities that we did this month that inform that opinion, positive or negative. You saw things, you got evidence, you did activities. Did some of these things affect the way you feel about these scenarios? So we would like you to respond uh, and just write a decent paragraph. Uh, another thing is when you're doing your homework, uh, this particular assignment you're allowed to turn in any way you like. It's not, it doesn't have to be an online assignment doesn't have to be a presentation. It, in fact, is probably better off as a document. And uh, it's often 
nicer for the teacher if you write the question as well as give your response. So we made sure this PDF, you can cut and paste from it. We don't want anybody to have to retype these scenarios. So you could just copy and paste them out of here, but it would be a really good idea to, to write the scenario and then write your response to it. Uh, and so there are seven of them. It shouldn't take too long. You sit down. Uh, and if you want to refer back to other material, uh, the reason I call this an open book test is that while you cannot, uh, all the activities close, meaning they you can't turn in your homework anymore, you can certainly go back and watch the movies again. You can certainly go back and read through discussions again. You can certainly go back and download instructions and, and things to read. So all the material that we've gone through all month is available. And uh, if you feel like you can't call it immediately to mind, then uh, you sh you're free to go back to the website and check it all out. And then part three, the difference between part two and part three, part two deals with the digital citizenship compass. It's a series of scenarios that you respond to. How do you feel about it? Part three is a series of tasks that you respond to. How would you go about accomplishing them? Now, we don't want you to do these tasks. We want you just to think about the plan for creating the tasks. So again, respond to each um, scenario with how you would go about accomplishing. Would you use some tools that you learned? Would you use certain kinds of search methods? Would you use geolocation to find something? Would you, uh, you know, use different kinds of digital tools? So, um, and, and in, this, in, in this section, we are also kind of pointing you to the week in which we introduced some of these concepts. But again, we want you to referring back to the evidence that you're going to use to give for your uh, plan of action. So uh, you're free to um, respond to any of these any way you want. But what we're encouraging you to do is to bring in the material that we learned this month so you know how it integrates into day-to-day -day pro problem solving. So uh, this is really not that strenuous. If you think back about the main assignments for week two or week three, they, you know, they took uh, quite a while. You could probably get through this in a couple of hours. And the reason for that is we didn't want you to have to be going up against the midnight deadline this week because your next class is going to start. It's going to open up at 12.01 a.m. on Sunday night or Monday morning, technically. Uh, for most of you, your next class is going to be PYP, the Psychology of Play. It's a really cool class. It teaches psychology uh, through the mechanism of learning about human gameplay. So it's uh, gamesmanship and teamwork and uh, psychological strategies and, and all that. Um, so it's a really fun course. And all that material is going to open up uh, as soon as our class closes at midnight. So um, rather than having you race to the deadline, it would be a great idea if some of you, uh, you know, got on the ball. You're all here on Monday now. You, you know what the assignments for the week are. So if you try to get this turned in by uh, Friday or uh, Saturday morning or something like that, then you can take the rest of the weekend off and relax, and then you'll be ready to get, get the jump on things. I know most of you were raring to go uh, day one for digital literacy. Uh, there were an awful lot of people who started doing assignments at 2 in the morning after the, everything opened up on that, that first Monday night. And if you want to do that again, then that's fine. Um, I can't say that everyone's going to get um, psychology of play. Not everybody has the same schedule. But for most people, that is the path. Uh, a, a lot of people have unique schedules. So I, I can't guarantee that that's what your next class is. Some people are going to get... Uh, uh, um, different schedules depending on who and, and what they're doing. But uh, this main assignment, uh, digital literacy, is really these three parts. It is part one where you're matching the nine statements up and telling me why. Part two where you're responding scenarios and telling me how you feel as a point on the digital compass. And part three where you're looking at these different problems and tasks and you're figuring out a plan of solution. And for both part uh, two and three, you want to just bring in the elements that you think would inform that decision. So uh, that's pretty much what that assignment is. And uh, I, as usual, 
Uh, you're going to have labs with your individual teachers. They'll take you through the assignments more in detail and uh, give you a little more information. Uh, but uh, this should be a lighter week. Uh, those of you that are curious about how you're doing, uh, you know, you can feel free to talk to your teacher about where you're at with your grades or uh, where things are marked. Uh, I think that uh, most of the students that I'm encountering are doing really well, and uh, uh, the, the FSO system does a, a good job of letting you know where you're at. And uh, now you're not going to get grades, your final grades for the week four assignments until on into uh, next month when you've already started the month two class. That's just the standard notion. But most of you should have a good sense um, by the middle of this week of how you've done on the first three weeks, and therefore you'll know if you'll be passing and moving on and uh, for sure or not. And if you're not sure, again, talk to your teacher, talk to your student advisor. Uh, you know, this, none of this is a mystery. We're, we're trying to be as open and above board about all this as we can. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, tonight is not a long night. Uh, make sure that you uh, go to the attendance tab. And as usual, there is a question on the attendance tab. The question this time around is name any point on the digital citizenship compass. So you've all been shown the compass. You all know what it looks like. And um, any one of these points, right, wrong, doesn't bother me, maybe, maybe not, that's what we're wanting to put into the uh, query question. So make sure everybody gets their attendance. Uh, if you don't forget to do the attendance link, you can always uh, send us email and we will send you that link. And now I'll just answer any questions as long as people have questions. Uh, you can raise your hand or you can just type it in chat. We don't have that many people here, so it should be easy to just type questions if you want. So uh, Brian was asking, what if we received credit for prior college? And I assumed that you were thinking that maybe you're testing out of psychology, which very well may happen. Uh, everyone gets their own schedule through FSO Connect, but we know that most students who start here and don't have any uh, other uh, credits or commitments typically go on from digital literacy to PYP. So um, that's the normal course, but it's not the same for everybody. Are there any other questions? Anybody else have any comments or want to have anything to say? Well, you guys have been terrific. This is another great month. Uh, all kinds of creative people that we've met, and uh, we like to keep in touch with you guys. Uh, and we follow you as you're going through school. We're just so proud of all the creative people that are coming through here. So um, as you move forward in Full Sail, remember your very first class teachers and keep in touch with us. And you guys have a fantastic week this week. Thanks a lot.